Bill Stevens, Pope Place Edison. One, one quick thing, and it's not to put anybody on the spot or anything like that, but I, I know, I guess last meeting you guys changed the uh, zoning along Route 27 at a meeting before. And I was just wondering from the council, we're going to have a meeting talking about that, to we'll talk to the neighborhood about that next week. And I'd like to know, give the council an opportunity to like just address two issues. One, why you voted for a 10-foot setback instead of the existing setback, and two, to uh, increase the floor area ratio. Has any, anybody got an idea of why the folks who voted for that actually voted for it? Because I don't want to misrepresent anything anybody says. You guys could be privy to information that I'm certainly not privy to and have a great reason for saying, hey, yeah, we want to bring everything right out onto the highway or right into the people's backyards, or we want a bigger building in there. But I know we have checked as late as just a few days ago with planning, and we still can't come up with an application for what people want to build there. So if anybody, is anybody willing to say or venture forth why they thought that was a good thing to vote for? And I'm, and I'm not debating whether it was good or not. Quite frankly, in a meeting, I'm not going to talk about whether it's a good idea or it's a bad idea. I just think it was a premature idea, as I've said to you all before. And, and I'm just curious if anybody's got a reason why they actually voted for that. Council President. Yes, ma'am. I can just tell you that in, um, I looked at other communities, similar, in the similar styles when it was brought to my attention, and it seemed to be a very, um, for lack of a better word, good area. I mean, it, it was a good use of the area. Nothing is ever perfect. No, and but I'm not similar, really debating the good or the bad. Not, I know you're not. I'm right, just telling right, you yeah, why yeah. I decided that I wanted to go okay. forward with this, because I did look at other communities after seeing this, after seeing the presentation by Brandy Forbes. I, I went to a few other areas that had similar kinds of things, um, and the, the, the village center sort of concept, and they seemed very viable. They were, they were pedestrian friendly. They were backed on neighborhoods as well. Of course, I didn't go around and ask those neighbors. I no, just right, did, I I did my own little tour of other towns to see it, and that's why I thought that's So basically why you thought it would be a good fit for that area? Absolutely. Right. Okay. That's, why, that's, and that, that's what fine. I did. I just didn't want to misrepresent any, anybody that's what and I give did. everybody an opportunity to take and uh, speak up. Is that it? All right. Thank you. Have Thank a good you. night. Anyone else? Do we have a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Ladies and Council, gentlemen, before, Council President, yes, before we adjourn. Sure. Okay, um, I'd like to uh, make an announcement on behalf of American Legion Post 435. Um, Commander Garrett Whitty, uh, the president and uh, of the Women's Auxiliary and staff will be preparing Thanksgiving dinner for veterans who will be spending Thanksgiving alone. Um, dinner will begin being served at 1 p.m and uh, it's at the corner of Oakland Avenue and Jefferson Boulevard. So uh, I've already contacted Senior Citizens um, um, Department, Judy Gillingham, and I've notified her. And uh, Commander asked me yesterday if I would get the word out. Um, and um, they don't want any veterans to be alone on Thanksgiving. So please feel free to come over to American Legion Post 435. If you need further information, um, Mrs. Murphy, may I have them call your office? You could contact me, and I'll get them any information they need. Okay, that's it. Thank you, Council President. Thank you. And I'd like to thank, of course, the Veterans Organization, the Post. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Um, Councilwoman Perlstein handed me a note. Um, I'm going to hand it back to her because, as the liaison, I'll let her make this announcement. But it is an important announcement. And then, Council President, I have something I'd like to say. Okay, I, I know there was a question about the ethics committee meeting that was supposed to be held on um, Monday evening, and apparently that meeting was canceled, and unfortunately there was a little bit of miscommunication, and they didn't get the word out to everyone. Um, uh, Tom Paterisi profusely apologizes for not getting that word out sooner, or, and um, they are going to be holding their next meeting on December 8th at 7 p.m., and again, he, he apologizes for the miscommunication, and um, they will be holding their next meeting on December 8th at 7 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I, I know there was some angst about the fact that uh, we would be dealing with the budget uh, during uh, a combined meeting, if I, if I can use that term. Um, there was uh, 
Uh, some concern about that uh, from several council members, and at this time I'll turn it over to Councilwoman Griffin Nusak, um, who wants to suggest uh, a, a better mousetrap, so thank, to speak. Thank, thank you, Council President. Um, in in wrecking, I was speaking with um, Councilman Mascola, and then I, I came to you. In recognizing that combined meetings do not provide enough time to have the, the complete forum that the public would like for the budget, we will, um, I'm looking to, um, with Mr. Miscola and the rest of us, to continue the budget hearings if we need to by having a special meeting, perhaps on Wednesday, December 3rd, de dedicated just to um, the budget hearings, because recognizing that Monday um, the 24th is a combined meeting, it is just before the holiday, and um, we want to make sure that everyone has enough time to say what they need to say. I know that everyone, um, I know that we've had a lot of information available to everyone for an, a, pro approximately two months now, but the public hearing is very important. And while everyone has had access to the information, they would like to have, to be able to question some of the, um, the administration or us um, over the budget process. So to be fair to everyone, to us included, um, if it's okay with everyone, if we could at least plan for um, a special meeting dedicated just to the budget, perhaps. I was just looking at, at dates in the, before the following week, perhaps Wednesday, December 3rd, and I'm sure as that date is confirmed, that information will be gotten out to the public. Right. Councilwoman, just a little housekeeping on that. Uh, logistically, uh, we need to check with the clerk to make sure that council chambers would be available on that date. Mm -hmm. But basically, the suggestion is that it looks like since we have a lot of business on a combined meeting late in, in November that if we need to, and the probability is that we will need to, extend our time so that we're not rushed, we're not rushing into anything, that we would allow time at a second meeting. However, just to make it clear, at this second meeting, the only thing we would really be dealing with is the budget. Is, is that agreeable with all the council members? Is there any objection to that or problem with it because then what we'll do on our end is we'll explore a date with the clerk. Once we have that date, uh, we will reserve that date um, for a special meeting to deal with the budget and we will announce that and notice that to the public. Sound like a plan? Sounds okay. like a plan. Any other comments before we adjourn? No. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> I, was gonna, uh, I did have one other comment. Sure, go ahead, ma'am. And I, we spoke of it on Monday night. And it had to do with COA, mm -hmm. and it had to do with the dates, mm -hmm. December 15th and December 22nd. Mm -hmm. And um, this is my question, and I guess, Mr. Lair, you would have to answer it. We are part of the group that is, has taken legal action through the League of Municipalities Correct. against this. How can we vote on um, approving or even disapproving on the 22nd when we are in litigation? Right. Well, that's a good question. Actually, there, nothing has been stayed. Um, the appellate division has not allowed the stay of the regulations. So essentially, the regulations are in effect. The courts have not stayed them. The challenge is still out there. So technically, we have to comply with the December 31st deadline. We are part of a group, but the regulations have not been stayed. Yeah, but um, <laughs> if we're opposing it, then it would seem to me that you couldn't vote in favor of something that you are ha opposing uh, with a legal challenge. Right. Understand that if that challenge r goes against the municipalities, and if we don't comply with the December 31st deadline, we may find ourselves vulnerable by way of a builder's remedy lawsuit. So we are, have been advised by COA that, and by the courts that you need to comply with the deadline because they have not been stayed. It's, I, I, it's, it's, <laughs> it's horrible, believe me, it's horrible. But that's, that's the way it is, unfortunately. Okay, man. Uh, Council President, may, may I just? Okay. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Uh, do it? Second. Second. Uh, I, just, um, I'm sorry. If you're going to go with December 3rd, can I assume that's going to be your final date so I can notify directors? Yes. We no. have to check. No. Well, she okay. has to check. Right. Okay. Let, let the yep. clerk do her business. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? 
Okay, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Do we have a second? second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Ladies and gentlemen, this meeting stands adjourned.